Good afternoon, everybody. If it's 2 o'clock on a Wednesday, it means it must be time for Webinar Wednesday. I am your host, Greg Epps, and we've got a, another fantastic webinar for you now. Uh, today is going to be quick and dirty. Uh, I did have to pre-record this earlier because I had a prior engagement, but uh, I did want to make sure that we uh, followed up or continued on our uh, path and travels through Transaction Desk. Now, if you recall, the last time uh, we uh, sat down and uh, went over stuff, we covered the transaction templates within Transaction Desk. Um, which, as you know, allows for you to set a framework and uh, a template for your transaction. So going forward, you can just select a, a, a particular template that will pull in all of the forms and things that you need. Uh, so today we're going to take that one step further. And now that we know how to create that transaction template, now we're going to use that template uh, to go ahead and create a transaction. Now, uh, today we're going to go through the creation of a transaction, and I'm going to try and work this so that we can see the three different ways that you can do so. Uh, the first is just going to be the neat, straight up, uh, straightforward way, and then we have a, a couple of other options that may make it a little easier for you to get from point A to point B uh, in creating that transaction. Now, as you can see right now, we are on the Transaction Desk dashboard. This is going to be the main page here. Um, so if I want to create a transaction, I have a couple of options. I can either click on this big blue button here that says Create Transaction, or, if you notice in the bottom right-hand portion of the screen, there's a little blue button. If I click on that button, I can also create a transaction by selecting the icon there. Now, obviously, we can also simply go to Transaction Desk. And if we want to create a transaction from this link under Transaction Desk, we can simply click Add to create a transaction. So the system itself really goes out of its way to allow for you to uh, create a transaction no matter where you are within the system. Uh, so in this case, to create one, I'm going to click Add. Now, you may recall when we were working on creating the transaction template uh, that in order to do so, it first gave you a drop-down window that you would make your selections on to uh, get started on creating the transaction, giving it a name, things of that nature. Um, there is redundancy within Transaction Desk, so as you can see here, by selecting Create a Transaction, it gives us another drop-down window. Now, in this case, we can give our transaction a name. Now, keep in mind, uh, most people will either use the, the address or perhaps their client uh, as the naming mechanism, but that's really up to you. Taster's choice. You can enter in whichever name works best for you. Uh, in this case, uh, for the sake of this, let's go ahead and test for five, eight. Go ahead and give that a name. Uh, below naming it, notice that we have a template here. Uh, it's also worth noting the only thing that has to be filled out to create a transaction is going to be that name. Uh, everything else doesn't have an asterisk next to it, uh, but we'll go into that here in a bit. So next up, uh, we have our template. Now, if you recall, uh, in creating that template, I believe we used webinar template last time. Uh, we'll go ahead and select that. Uh, in selecting that template, that's going to allow for us to pull in all the information that we needed from the uh, template creation screen. So all those forms, if there were any contacts, uh, if we had any participants that we wanted to uh, involve in this transaction, all of those would be pulled in from that transaction template there, which we'll take a look at when we look at the, uh, the, the transaction itself. Now, if you notice, next up we've got import data and add me as. I'm going to um, uh, skip over import data now because that's just another way that we can create a listing or create a transaction. But notice it says add me as the. If I click on that drop down window, I have the choice between listing agent, selling agent, neither, or both. Uh, now, in this case, I would recommend selecting which one you are um, just because as you go through, if you were to import this information from the MLS uh, and you put yourself as a list agent when you weren't, it would have both you and the actual list agent associated with that transaction. So just want to keep everything above board and on the up and up. So uh, list yourself as you are. Uh, in this case, I'm going to select neither. Now, uh, there are multiple ways or times when you would want to create a transaction. If you had one, let's say you were creating a transaction uh, where you wanted to put in forms like an exclusive seller listing agreement because you were getting ready to do a presentation and wanted to get the ball rolling on getting all that stuff together, this is how you would start. We would not import any information from the MLS. We would simply enter in uh, the general information and click Create. Uh, if you notice before we go on, I do have the Use Wizard button checked. If you are new to creating a transaction, I highly recommend keeping that button checked because it does hold your hand and walk you through step by step how to create a transaction. So as we go through here, I'm going to click Create. And it's going to take us to our transaction creation screen. Now, uh, in the scenario where we're creating this for a possible presentation, I can go through and add a photo by clicking on the Add Photo button. I can also go through, and since we're on step one, Details, 
I can fill out all of the property information. We've got our address information, property information, uh, listing information, purchase information. I can fill this out as much as I need to. It is worth noting, if at the uh, notice here at the bottom of the screen, there is a save and exit button. Once you fill out this information, you can save this transaction and come back to it at a later date. Uh, this isn't a static document, so if you need to come back and make some edits, you can do so, or if you need to add things or remove things, you can do so as well. Uh, once you filled out all of the detailed information, you can click Save or you can click Next. Save and Exit will exit you out to the dashboard screen. Next, we'll move you through these five steps. So while we filled out the details, the next step would be to go through and, as you can see, fill out our transaction dates. Once we filled out the dates, we can then go contacts. Now, notice in this case, from the template I created, I had John Ryan as our prospective buyer. Um, had I added myself, uh, it, I would show up there as well. Um, this is where you, it's gonna house any of the contacts that you've added through that transaction template. And if you import information from the MLS, uh, it's gonna pull in those list agent, list broker, uh, that list agent, list broker information right here. Step four is gonna be our forms. Now notice, just by clicking on that, we've already got two Fannie Mae's. Um, unfortunately, I don't have access to the GAR forms, but uh, we were able to pull in these RE forms here. And really what this shows is the strength of that transaction template, because so long as you know specifically what forms you would like to add to that transaction or transactions of this type, simply by selecting that template is automatically gonna pull those forms in, which thus allows for you to go um, have easier access to get those digital signatures uh, completed. Along with the forms, we do have documents, which as you recall from uh, the last time we covered the templates, documents are gonna be all of those non-GAR uh, office specific type forms. Forms that you, or documents that you would upload into the system from your computer uh, will, go, will be housed here. If you notice, uh, the one that we do have is the fax back cover sheet. I didn't actually add that to the transaction template, but anytime you create a transaction, the system is gonna create this cover sheet. Now what the cover sheet does, is it serves as a fax back cover sheet for any documents that you have. The example here being, if I have a document that I'd like for you to sign, uh, but you don't want to do it digitally, I can uh, email you that uh, form. I can uh, attach this fax back cover sheet uh, to that document. You can print it out, sign it, put this cover sheet on top of it, and then this barcode that my cursor is hovering around here lets the fax machine know that it's going to go directly into this transactions folder. So it would show up under your documents there. So I uh, just wanted to point out what that fax back cover sheet does for those of you that don't know. It's a it's just a, uh, a, a way to index and, and properly sort uh, any documents you sent out from the system to make sure that when your client sign them and put that cover sheet on, they'll go right back into their prospective transaction folder. Once you are done with the documents, you've covered all five steps of the transaction creation. From here, you can simply click Done, and it will create that transaction for you. Now, like I mentioned before, there are multiple ways to create a transaction, so I'm not going to click Done just yet. Uh, but I did, before I move on, want to point out the fact that out to the right-hand side, uh, underneath Wizard, notice that all of the steps that we covered are going to be broken out here with a couple more. Uh, if you notice, not only can we do the dashboard details, contacts, forms, but we also have the ability to go directly into digital signatures with the, the signing link here. Um, also, uh, one thing that's worth noting is the history at the bottom. This system timestamps and dates every action that you make towards a particular transaction. So even though all I did was attach a template to this, when I click on history, it already points out when the transaction was created, when the contact was added, and when each individual form was added to that transaction. So the system itself is going to keep tabs on that. Um, going back to our, since I didn't click done, uh, going back to our transaction, because you remember I mentioned there are, are multiple ways to do so. Uh, we just covered how to do these traditional standard manual entry uh, manual entry um, way. Uh, next, I wanted to show you how you can enter in a listing if, or how you can enter in or create a transaction if you happen to know the list number that you're wanting to uh, create the transaction for. So in this case, actually, we already clicked on transaction. That's, I'm going to go to this little blue one here. We're going to click Create Transaction. Now... It's going to give us the same drop-down screen, but I'm going to give it a name, select my template. So this way we're going to import the information that we need. But instead of clicking create, I'm going to go down to this next uh, heading here, import data. I'm going to select Georgia MLS. And now it's key. Notice that it gives us a window where we can select a property type. I'm going to select the property type of the listing that I'm looking for. And then I'm going to type in a list number. 
Oh, we already got one here. Once I've typed in that list number, I'm going to click Create. Now notice, once I click Create, it's going to take me over to that same transaction uh, screen that we were looking at before. Same five steps going through that wizard. The key difference is, since I use the list number from the MLS, I, uh, you, you may notice some things like the address has been listed the photo for that property is available. Now as I scroll down through the details of this transaction, notice how it's already filled out. And that's because it's pulling in the information from the MLS to fill out the property information for the transaction. So I scroll next onto step two. It's going to give us those transaction dates. Now keep in mind we can continually fill this out, uh, but it does put in and or pull the dates uh, from that transaction or from that listing, excuse me, into the transaction. Notice for contacts, uh, we've got our buyer, and I guess I had uh, selected myself as a list agent there, which I should uh, go ahead and remove. So I'm going to remove myself as the list agent. So now we have the actual list agent and broker and our buyer. We've got our forms, just like we mentioned before, that are going to show up because we pulled them into that template. And then finally, we have our fax back cover sheet. So this is a quicker way for you to get in and access that listing information. And once again, all I did was directly from that uh, the start of that transaction, you're going to put in the name, select your template, and then down here under import data, remember to select Georgia MLS. And the key here is to make sure you select the proper, the proper property type for the MLS number that you've selected. If for some reason I had put in this 857 number and I had acreage and farm selected, it would not find that listing. So the key here is to get the right property type because without that correct property type, uh, the system itself, Transaction Desk, won't know uh, which listing to pull in. I did mention there are three ways that you can go about doing that, and I would like you to know I did actually hold uh, the number three up in my hands like you guys can see that. <laughs> I need a coffee. All right. Uh, but uh, we've covered the, the first two. One is to enter in a transaction naturally. Uh, the other is to or naturally, traditionally, by just manually entering everything in. Uh, we also showed that you could go through and fill out the list number uh, for that listing along with the property type to import the listing data into the transaction. Now, the third way doesn't even require us to be in Transaction Desk. So if I go over here to the dashboard, I'm going to make my way over to Paragon. Now, if you can see here, I've already got a search run. So let's say we're uh, looking through uh, 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 Paragon. We're in the system. We are trying to find a listing that's going to work well for uh, our client. Going through the listings, we look at our results. Now, instead of just copying a list number and typing it into the transaction desk screen, what I'm going to do is we'll find a listing. I'm going to find a listing. I'm going to go over and under the quick icon or the action icons, those Skittles that I talk about so much, if I scroll down and I select a listing, notice how we have a series of icons. This uh, blue and white one here, if I cover that uh, cursor over it, notice it says transaction desk. If I click on that, it's going to open up Transaction Desk. It's going to log me into Transaction Desk. And it's going to give me the drop down window for that individual property. Notice it's already got the address filled out and the name. So all I have to do now is select my template. It's already got the MLS information listed here. I'm going to put what I am, which in this case is neither, and I'm going to click Create. And just like it did uh, by entering, by manually typing in that list number, it takes us right over to our transaction screen where I can then go through all five of those steps and complete filling out all of the information that we have for that transaction. Just that simple, guys. Uh, again, just to reiterate, from wherever you are in the system, you can click Create Transaction, give it a name, select the template, select your property type, and then you'll import that list number or you'll manually enter in that information. Um, we, uh, the, uh, it is worth noting, let me close out here. Do, do, do. I know uh, we've got our final one coming up next week, our final transaction as webinar showing the digital signatures. But in the interim, if you want to uh, get some more supplemental information pertaining to the creation of a transaction within the system, like I mentioned before, in the bottom right-hand portion of the screen, there is that uh, blue circle. One of those options is the question mark. 
Uh, you can also get the same thing by clicking on the question mark over here. But clicking on that question mark is going to take you over to the support screen. From there, you will be able to view uh, online training, help guides, help videos, and pre-recorded webinars. So not only can you go through and register for a live webinar, you can go through any of their tech guides. So in this case, do, do, we're overseeing a transaction using Transaction Desk Mobile, working with transactions. You can go through here, click on Create a Transaction, and it will download that full PDF for you to go ahead and view at your leisure, and it'll walk you through step by step in how to create that transaction. Along with that, if you don't feel like reading, uh, we do have help videos. So if you go over here to the transactions under help video, you can go uh, how to create it. Actually, this doesn't even break it down to just how to create a transaction. It shows you to have how to add every part of that transaction. So there's a small video covering every step that we took today. Uh, there's also a Vimeo page that has a full series of videos at your disposal uh, to help you go over uh, and, and navigate uh, that transaction desk system. Um, I hope this was helpful for, uh, for you guys today. Like I mentioned before, we are going to be coming back next week. That's right, mid-May. It should be even hotter than it is now. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to cover the digital signatures. Uh, but until that time, if you have any questions, like I mentioned, you can use the help desk information. O otherwise, you can shoot me an email. I can be reached at greg, G-R-E-G, -E at G-A-M-L-S dot com. Once again, that's greg, G-R-E-G, -E at G-A-M-L-S dot com. Thanks a lot, guys. I hope you have a great one. Go forth and sell a couple million dollars worth of homes, and we'll see you same bad time, same bad channel next week. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye.